welcome to Las Vegas, the place dreams are made of. A place where it's okay to gamble, take a chance, test your luck. Many dreams are dashed, but for a chosen few, fame and fortune will be found in the Nevada desert. This is where the pot of gold is waiting, at the South Point Hotel and Casino on the fabulous strip here in a city that never sleeps. Every year, this is where they hold the world-renowned Vegas Shoot. It's one of the biggest and most prestigious archery events on the planet. And oh, by the way, it also serves as the fourth and final stage of the Indoor World Cup Tour, not to mention the World Cup Finals. It's the best of the best, going arrow by arrow, bow by bow, in a city famous for big-time title bouts. The Indoor Tour kicked off last November on Moroccan carpets in Marrakesh, the second World Cup event on the African continent. Naomi Jones would be locked in a battle with Russia's Elena Filipova, who tied the match at 141 to force the shoot-off. Jones applies the pressure with a solid 10 and would emerge the victor when Filipova's shot flies into the nine ring, the gold going to Great Britain. Well, I hadn't really found my rhythm for the entire match. It was not not an easy match for me to shoot anyway. And then like, I was kind of a bit relieved to be honest to get the chance to have that opportunity for the one arrow. And then you just, you know, you know that's, it has to work. So you just make it work and yeah, just in the zone. Meanwhile, the men's compound gold medal match turned out to be a battle of the titans. Magic Mike Schlosser taking on big time Braden Gelantine. Late in the game, the Dutchman moves ahead by eight, leaving the door open for the American, who moves back in front by two. Schlosser would slip just a bit on his final attempt, so eight or better gets the job done for Braden, and he can probably do that with his eyes closed. Braden Gelantine kicks off the indoor campaign with a gold medal performance. It's always really nice to start off the indoor season shooting really well. I feel like I have an edge for the first tournament of the year because I don't really take a vacation from training. A lot of the American people, they take a, they take a break and go hunting or just you know live a normal life. Uh, I, I tend to keep my shooting up just to make sure that I'm, I'm fit and ready to go. So the first tournament of the year, it's always really nice because I'm in mid-season form while everyone else is still trying to work the rust off. Great Britain had a shot at more gold in women's recurve. Naomi Folkard facing Berenger Chou of France who won the first two sets, leaving Folkard in dire straits going to set three. Naomi's up by nine in this set, but Berenger's up for the challenge. Folkard's nine provides all the opportunity her French opponent needs. She is a shoe in for the victory. Berenger Chou, battling back from injury, picks up precious medal in Marrakesh. Marrakesh was my first international indoor competition since my surgery, so it was really important for me. It was also a stage with less people, so I knew I had a good chance when I went on this stage to really win and collect the maximum number of points for the World Cup. And I faced Naomi in the gold medal match. I know her. I shoot against her a lot, and she's never beaten me. So I said to myself, it's not going to happen now. And that's how I won. It would be Russia versus Italy in the recurve gold medal match on the men's side. Matteo Fasore facing Alexei Borodin, who is down 5-3 and fighting to force a shoot-off. But that agonizing eight would put Alexei at the mercy of Matteo Fasore, who forged ahead with some clutch shooting. Borodin bears down, but can only come up with nine points on his last shot, so eight or better gets it done for Fisori, who stakes his claim on the gold medal after a close call in the semis. I didn't expect such a strong adversary in the semifinals because I spoke to a friend of mine who faced him before, and he told me he couldn't find his way to score 30. So I was overconfident, and I paid for that because I had to go all the way to the shoot-off. The tour would then move from Morocco to Thailand, where Bangkok played host to Stage 2 and a bang-bang gold medal match featuring Erica Jones and Natalia Avdieva, who was down by two with three arrows to go. But after that 10, Jones would falter with a nine, making this a one-point match with one to go. The Russian archer finished with five straight tens, but 
it wasn't enough to overcome an early deficit. Jones does just enough to hang on and win it, picking up 21 World Cup points along with another gold medallion. For the indoor season, I started training in October. Um, a little bit, I took a little bit of time off in October, but I really um, you know, picked it up a lot in November especially. And I you know, just was shooting a lot of the vertical three spot in preparation for, for Bangkok and uh, you know, was just able to pull out the win, so I was happy. Meanwhile, Braden Galantine made it back-to-back -back appearances in gold medal matches, only this time he'd be taking on Peter Elzinga of the Netherlands, who won gold in Colombia last summer but fell behind by two in the first end and was trying to make up the difference late in the day. But on this day, Peter needed to be perfect because Braden was. Galantine running the table with 15 dead solid shots. Braden puts up a perfect score of 150, forcing the Dutchman to settle for silver. The final match, if I could describe it in one word, would be easy. Uh, everything felt perfect. My technique, my, my form, my shot timing, everything was amazing. I, I, I hope that I can bottle that feeling up and just have it with me at every tournament from here on out. Katuna taught Katniss Everdeen how to shoot, but could she teach Korea's Jeon Sung Yoon a lesson or two? Not in the women's recurve gold medal match. After splitting the set with Katuna Loreg, the young Korean took control of the match, winning the next two sets before splitting the fourth set. We did the math, and that all adds up to a 6-2 victory for Korea's Jeon Sung Yoon. Katuna takes home the silver. It was an all-Korean affair in the recurve men's gold medal showdown. Im Ji Won and Gi Dong Hyun would wage a battle back and forth, a seesaw battle that went to a shoot off. Gi would shoot first and would not hit the center ring. That left the door unlocked for Im Ji Won, who jumped all over this golden opportunity, becoming the first Korean man to win an indoor gold medal in recurve competition. In January, Archery's Flying Circus landed back in Europe for Stage 3 in France, where two of the top women from South Africa would fight for gold. Janine von Kradenberg, Danielle Wetzel, all tied up at 144 after regulation play. Time for a shoot-off. Both would make great shots under pressure, both would wind up in the 10 ring, but the point of Janine Zero would prove to be just a little bit closer to the center of the target, giving Janine von Kradenberg the decision and the gold medal. Um, my shootout arrow was, um, that was the first time I really felt the nerves. I could feel, feel my um, knees wobbling and I just aimed for the middle and spray and hope it would go there. Before the medal matches began, Mike Schlosser stole the spotlight, setting an indoor world record shooting a perfect 600. Uh, they were really shaky. I, uh, <laughs> I couldn't keep it, the dot in the middle. I think I saw a couple more bubbles and on. And I, uh, but yeah, I thought the ball, first one was out, first time I looked. And I shot the second arrow and I think, oh shit. And I looked again at the top one and I think, oh, it might do it. And then uh, last one went pretty okay. Uh, it feels great to have a world record that keeps on standing because nobody can beat it. So that feels really good. That record score of 600 was Mike's ticket to the finals where he'd go up against Rio Wild, who recovered nicely from that nine on his first shot of the fifth end. Automatic Mike did what he always seems to do and led by two with one to go. The wild man wasn't about to go down without a fight, but Schlosser wasn't about to let this victory slip away. Mr. Perfect puts the finishing touches on another big win, making an even bigger name for himself in Nîmes. I started a bit uh, shaky, I had 29, 28, uh, but the last three ends I kept my uh, mind where, yeah, where it should be and I kept it straight. Korea's two Kims took to the field of battle in the recurve gold medal matchup. Kim Eun Jung desperately trying to play catch up after falling behind 5-3. Her chances don't look good after that nine, but Kim Ming Jung doesn't take advantage and holds a slim one point lead in this set. That lead isn't so slim after a missed shot blows the match wide open. Kim Min Jung's a little low on her final shot, but it matters not. She takes the set and the match and the gold. Oh, 
I did feel nervous when I came into the arena because of all the people and all the lights. But then, as soon as I stood on the line, I just focused on the shooting, and then it was all okay. The final match in Nîmes featured two more of Korea's finest. Olympic gold medalist Oh Jin Yuk would be challenged by Korean countryman Min Byung Yeon. And this one did not go according to plan for Mr. Oh, who dropped the first two sets and trailed 4 nothing. Nine is not what he needed to come from behind, especially with his steely-eyed opponent locked in on the 10 ring. Oh would finish with a strong shot, but by then it was too late. Korea's got another rising star who got a nice hand from the man he defeated in straight sets. Finally, it was time to head for the bright lights of Vegas. Long lines waiting to enter the South Point Hotel and Casinos Arena, all decked out for the 2015 World Cup Final. Thousands flocking to Vegas from around the world to be a part of Archery's premier indoor event. Yes, we welcome everybody to Las Vegas to stage four of the World Cup Indoor. We have almost 50 countries, 48 countries are represented at the moment, and we've still got people registering, so it's a great turnout. I, I think that, you know, we started this four years ago, and um, it's just been incredible uh, to look at the growth that we've had. Uh, you know, we've, we started with just a few hundred shooters, and obviously we've grown drastically. But now to see all the countries represented and the teams that are coming from the different countries is just great for archery. It's, uh, it's obvious that this has worked well for us. It's worked well for world archery. And uh, we're just excited and happy to be a part of it. And uh, we're excited too because of our youth numbers, the kids. Uh, we've had a huge increase uh, in the overall of all the kids shooting. So very exciting from all angles. Yeah, it's always exciting when Erica Jones makes the gold medal match. The silver medalist at last fall's outdoor final in Lausanne, looking to go one better and grab some gold in Sin City, USA. To get to the gold, she'd have to get by another American, Crystal Gauvin, who's come on strong in the last year or so. We'll pick up this showdown late in the match with Crystal trying to play catch up, something akin to trying to free yourself from quicksand when you're up against Erica. Jones has a wealth of experience for someone so young and knows how to go for the jugular. She's up two with two to go in the fourth end. Make that a three-point lead after a slight gaffe by Govin, who sees it slipping away after nine. Jones jumps on her chance to extend the margin with a 10-9 liner. And when Crystal's last arrow lands just outside the line, the deed's all but done. The drama and suspense marking so many matches at the Vegas shoot pretty much non-existent in this compound gold medal match. Upon review by the judges, it's a four-point cushion for Erica heading to the fifth and what would probably be the final end. To Crystal's credit, she would try to finish on a high note with a shot inside the center ring. Meanwhile, Jones proves to be human after all, giving back a point, cutting the deficit back down to three. Gauvin, though, just not her usual groove, she falters ever so slightly with another nine. And when that happens, Erica usually makes you pay. Another direct hit gives her back a four-point edge with one to shoot. Crystal cracking on her final two shots. Gauvin going quietly into the good night with a pair of nines in the fifth end. Erica in control from start to finish, adding even more hardware to her vast collection. It's a workmanlike victory for Jones in convincing fashion as she posts a five-point win over another formidable foe. So Erica follows up on a successful trip to Thailand where she brought home the gold from stage two. America's top female compound archer navigating her way through a strong field of competitors here in Las Vegas, leaving just four points out on the field in this gold medal match, which gives her a lot of momentum as we head for the outdoor season. After grabbing a two-point lead in the first end, Jones wins going away and then grabs a hug from husband Casey. As the song in the background says, pretty much, this girl is on fire. Bottom line, Erica Jones 146, 
Crystal Govan, 141. Erica, pretty excited. Yeah, this win is, I mean, great for me. I, I've really struggled the last month, especially, and I've made a few changes with things. And, you know, I wasn't expecting to, I was expecting to do well, but not like super well here because of the past few tournaments. So I'm really happy with, with how it turned out and how I'm shooting. Stefan Hansen burst upon the scene almost two years ago, joining forces with Martin Damsbo and Patrick Larson to win a team gold medal on Conialti Beach, Antalya. But here in Las Vegas, he'd be on his own, sharing a spotlight with Mike Schlosser, half man, half machine. The Dutchman coming off a fantastic showing in France, breaking the world record with a perfect 600 score in qualifying before grabbing the gold medal away from Rio Wild. Fourth set now, and Hansen's tried to hang on. But matched up with Mike Schlosser, a nine's like taking a knife to a gunfight. Automatic Mike, relentless, and he's on a roll. The young man from Denmark tries to make his move with an arrow right down the middle of Las Vegas Boulevard. But the Dane's going to be down by four because Mr. Schlosser just can't seem to miss the center of his target. Hansen isn't off target very often, Ten. concluding the fourth end with a pair of tens to keep his slim chances alive. And his chances get a big boost when Mr. Perfect proves to be a mere mortal after all with a shot that strays into the nine ring. The lead is down to three with three arrows to go. Now, no matter the outcome, Mike Schlosser and Stefan Hansen represent the next generation, the new generation of great young compound competitors rising up to challenge the likes of Rio Wild, Braden Galantine, Pierre-Julien Deloche, and Sergio Pagny. Back to the fifth end now, and Hansen fires first, lays down a liner. Meanwhile, Mike's in his own world, seemingly unaware of his opponent's score, blocking out everything except the center ring. He's back in his favorite spot and ups the ante to four points with two to go. Stefan's struggling now, dropping yet another point to fall behind by five. But there's no let up from Automatic Mike, whose job gets even easier thanks to some surprisingly shaky shots by Stefan coming down the stretch. Needs five to win, Schlosser will double down and drill a 10 on his final shot and cashes in again in the gaming capital of the world. This is becoming a familiar pose for this young man from the Netherlands who's once again able to raise his arms in victory. For Stefan Hansen, a silver medal and better days ahead, no doubt for this great young Dane, who was even with Mike Schlosser for two of the five ends, but the first, second, and fifth end would prove to be his undoing against a marksman who's really just coming into his own. The sky's the limit for Mr. Perfect, who was near perfect in this gold medal match. It was pretty hard because it was a long week, and after all that, it's tough to shoot against all those guys. I needed to step up my game, and I did, luckily. When it comes to recurve, the conversation usually involves the great Korean archers who are starting to make their presence felt on the indoor tour. Jo Sung Hyun had performed well all week in Vegas, and of course the same could be said for her Korean colleague Kim Min Jung, who had to be confident coming off a gold medal win at Stage 3 in Nîmes. The knowledgeable crowd at the South Point Hotel and Casino anxiously awaiting to see what these two talented Koreans could do going head to head. After three sets, Miss Kim had the 4-2 advantage after splitting the first two sets before taking the third. So Zhu leads off in the fourth set with a strong effort, knowing she can tie the match if she can win this set. Kim's goal? To keep that lead. And she matches her opponent's 10. Zhu keeps the heat on with another arrow that's right on target. but Miss Kim's up to the challenge. If she ties the set, she'll keep a two-point lead in the match. That's not something Zhou can stop to think about. Her task 
Keep shooting tens and see how everything comes out in the end. The end could be near with Ms. Kim continuing to match her Korean counterpart shot for shot. So it's still a two-point lead with one set to shoot. Kim's got a cushion, but not much margin for error. After a stroll to retrieve those arrows, these two are right back on the line to decide the outcome once and for all. Since she's trailing, Zhou leads off and dials up the pressure even more. The onus is now on Ms. Kim to keep shooting tens herself, but she puts herself in a very precarious position by opening the fifth set with a nine. That breathes new life into Zhou, who's dialing up the heat even more with another ten. Kim will rebound from her first shot, landing her next right back in the center circle. But this set is now out of her hands. Zhou's in control and she puts the hammer down. A string of three straight tens gives her the set and the two points desperately needed to tie the match and force a shoot-off regardless of what Kim does with her third shot. So, Jo Seung Hyun accomplishes the first phase of her comeback. She catches Kim to force the one arrow shoot off in Vegas. Jo gets the first shot at breaking the tie, and it's a 10 liner, leaving plenty of room for Kim to salvage a victory from the jaws of defeat. But after holding for an eternity, Kim shoots a shocking eight. The comeback's complete. Jo Seung Hyun coming from two down after four sets, claiming the gold medal in women's recurve. On the men's side of the equation, it would once again be an all-Korean affair. Min byung yeon the gold medalist in Neem, would be on target number two, doing battle with Neem bronze medalist Kim jae Yong on target number one. All eyes in the South Point Hotel and Casino trained on the shooting line where Min has a two-point deficit to make up after the first two sets. Mr. Kim keeps the heat on by opening set three with an on-target 10. Ten. So Mean ups his game and answers with a 10 of his own. Ten. There's that 10. Now Kim refuses to blink. His second shot's good as gold, which is more than could be said for Min's final shot of this set. Ten. After that nine, Kim can go up by four points if he comes through with another perfect shot. No problem for Kim Jae-yong, who forges ahead in the match and now leads 5-1 with a chance to close out the match in four sets. At this point, Min, the man who vanquished Oh jin Yuk and Neem, hasn't won a single set and he's in trouble knowing he's got to win the next two just to force a shoot-off. Of course, he was fully capable of doing just that, having fired nine straight tens in his upset over Ojin Yuck in France just weeks before. But in this Wild West shoot-off, 12 of Mr. Kim's arrows would land dead center, putting him into the driver's seat heading down the home stretch. Mean stays calm and shows the form that got him a gold medal at stage three. But at this point, he's trading shots with Kim, who shows no signs of letting up. Means finally found a good rhythm, but again, it might be too little too late to change the outcome. Especially with Kim connecting time and time again with that 10 ring. Mean finishes with a flourish, three tens in a row. He's done all he can, and the match will go on if Mr. Kim misses his mark and drops this set, but that's not in his game plan. He slams the door with three tens of his own, so he splits the set and picks up the one point needed to secure the victory. An impressive display of marksmanship by both of these athletes. But when the smoke cleared, Kim was clearly more consistent from start to finish. He grabbed the lead in the first set and never let go, taking two sets and splitting two sets to win in four 
by four. The final score, Kim Jae Young, goes for the gold and gets it with a 6-2 win. So, a great indoor season comes to a close, and we get set to head outdoors with Stage 1 in Shanghai.